All right, Coach, we're going to get started with Cameron Cox with 12 News. Hey, Coach, how would you sum, out, sum up up there tonight? Um, look, it was a typical uh, playoff desperation by them. Um, we didn't play with the desperation necessary to win a game like that consistently. And um, that's how I would sum it up. Uh, offensively tonight, uh, we weren't sound at all. You look at the point totals in the first, third, and fourth. You know, they played good defense tonight, but we, we didn't run our offense uh, the way that we have been running it um, for most of these playoffs. But they, they played with a great deal of desperation, 50-50 balls, um, attacking the offensive glass, attacking the rim. Uh, they played hard in, in every segment of the game. Um, we didn't play as hard consistently. Um, and so you have to tip your hat to them. Uh, they brought it tonight for more of the 48 minutes than we did. Next is going to be Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Kellen Olsen. Yeah, Coach, just your assessment of Chris and how he looked tonight. Yeah, it was his first game back. Um, you know, you could see it, some flashes of it. Um, I, I thought I played him too much, and he probably got tired, but it, it hurt us when uh, campaign couldn't come back. So I left Chris out there for a longer stretch, and then that that's on me. Um, but I think as he, you know, practices more and plays more, he hasn't done anything in 10 days. And so, you know, I think he'll get better. Uh, he'll be much better in the second game from a conditioning standpoint or in his next game. Next is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports, followed by Dave McMiniman. Hey, Monty, that third quarter was the most you guys have been outscored in any quarter this postseason. Mm -hmm. What did you see going on? With the they came out in the third quarter and just <clears throat> brought it. You know, our guys were talking about their level of play in the timeouts, and, and everybody knew it. We just didn't match um, their force. And uh, like I said, you have to give them credit. Uh, we have to understand that, you know, playing against a, a team that was going to play with that kind of effort every quarter. And we've been pretty good in third quarter. So that was uh, a bit surprising um, for us. So um, they threw a punch, and now we got to, you know, counter with another punch and, and make sure we bring the effort and execution in the next game. Next is Dave McMenamin with ESPN, followed by Mark Spears. Funny, I had to play the game of the slides, maybe in the game two for Cameron. Do you have any sense of uh, how this angle could affect him? No, I don't. We'll, we'll see. Um, he tried to come back and um, it just wouldn't allow him to, you know, get back out there on the floor. So I'll, I'll get more of an update when I go in the back. Next is Mark Spears with ESPN, followed by Anthony Slater. Coach, uh, both can have one of the mm -hmm. shooting games. How much of it was an off night? How much of it do you think was the mask? It's hard to say. Um, he, he, he won't make excuses about that. Um, there were stretches where we as a team, the ball just, just didn't pop around the gym the way that we're typical or typically pop it around the gym. But for, for Book, like those kinds of shooting nights uh, don't happen often. I mean, he and Chris both, um, Chris was probably more conditioning and first time getting back out there. And there was a lot of attention on Book, a lot of hands on him. So those guys will adjust. Next is Anthony Slater with The Athletic, followed by Gina Mizell. Yeah, Coach, along those uh, same lines, uh, how, you know, they, they put Beverly on him a lot more, on Booker a lot more the last couple of games. What is he doing uh, that's been so effective, kind of making Booker inefficient? It's hard to say. If, you know, Patrick's a really good defender. We know that. But uh, there were times where Book just missed a shot. You know, I'll look at the film. He's physical for sure. That can wear a guy down. Um, we have to do a much better job of having more balance uh, in our offense. If you look at the point totals, uh, a lot of our stuff came late in the clock. Um, that, that's not how we've been playing most of the playoffs. So you know, tip your hat to, to Beverly. He plays really good defense. He's aggressive. But when I look at the film, I bet you'll just see Book just miss some shots. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com and then Greg Moore. Hey, Monty, you mentioned before the game that there were some things that have popped up in game two that you're like, those are things we need to yeah. pick up. It's, was it same, yes. the same things? Yeah. Yeah, we had uh, 
difficulty in, in our switches. Uh, Paul had a, a dunk at the end of the second quarter. We didn't communicate the red, the switch properly. Uh, another example was we helped off Kennard on a drive. We had the drive under control. We went and helped, kicked it to him, he gets a three. Like those are things we talked about. And so our guys don't have the excuse of being young anymore. We won playoff series. We know what it takes and now we got to go out and do it. We'll look at the film. We'll see the things that we didn't do well. We'll try to strengthen the things we do well and uh, come back better in the next game. Next is Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic, followed by Sam Amick. Thanks, Coach. Um, <clears throat> should DeAndre have been more forceful in calling for the ball with Devin and Chris having such uh, off nights shooting? Or, or should Devin and Chris have just done a better job of incorporating him? He, he had a really hot first quarter, and then he kind of faded. We as a team can can do a better job of getting DA the ball. That's on me. That's, that's something that whether we post him up or hit him more, as he's diving to the basket. They were taking him out. I thought we tried to force it a few times, trying to make interior passes when the corners were wide open. But um, you know, that, that's something that we'll look at and, and try to fix for the next game. Next up is going to be Sam Amick with The Athletic, followed by Dan Wojcicki. Monty, uh, because of what the Clippers did the last two rounds, mm -hmm. you know, the story down to be Kennedy again, I wonder you know, if you guys took care of Denver had a chance to, to watch this team up close. What kind of themes are you seeing in terms of how they, they do manage to, to, to hit back from the down series? You've been obviously a you know, real complimentary of Ty. Yeah. What do you see about how they, do? they play with a great deal of desperation in these um, situations. And uh, our guys expected it, um, but I don't think we dealt with it well. You know, we, we knew what they were going to do. We knew they were going to come out at halftime with more force, and, and we just didn't match it. Uh, and on the road, you have to exceed it. And so we've watched them for a while. We respect what they do, and we'll be better next game. Got time for three more. Next is going to be Dan Wojcicki with the LA Times, followed by Jose Romero. Hey, um, Devin had two rough shooting nights in the first round against the Lakers. Um, comes back out on your home court, and he's incredibly hot right away. Is he a guy that you talk to at all in these situations, or is it just that ball's going to go in and you trust it? Both. I'll talk to him. Uh, we'll look at the film and see opportunities to, you know, either knock it down or f trust your teammate. Um, but I also know that it's going to come uh, because he works too hard. You know what I mean? And he's been in these situations, as you alluded to, throughout the playoffs. So, uh, We'll watch the film tomorrow. I'll sit and talk with him and Chris and, and try to, you know, see opportunities for us to be more efficient on offense. Like I said, I thought the ball stuck too much. We didn't move it around the gym. When we did, when we touched the paint and moved it to the corner, we got open looks. We didn't always make it, but they're putting a lot of hands on them. They're showing them a lot of bodies. Uh, speaking of book, and guys got to be ready to make plays when he gets off of them. Do you remember what you said to him after that? The, those struggles. Against hoop. The, uh, the same thing I always tell all of our guys. Go out there and hoop. Don't forget who you are. Um, I don't want our guys thinking out there. We, we put structure out there. We want our guys to use their gifts within our system. But I, I tell our guys to hoop. And um, they seem to respond well to that. Final two questions are Jose Romero with the Arizona Republic and Kyle Goon. Hey, Monty. Uh, did you sense a little frustration in... Uh... And Jay Crowder, just the way he defends, the way the things that you ask him to do defensively, just trying to get up in somebody and and then the fouls. I think so. Um, but the one thing that we can't do is allow the officials to mess with our mental stamina. But I, I see the pushing off out there. We all see it. That's not something that, you know, anybody would sit in this room and say they don't push off to get open. And Jay's getting frustrated with that, but we got to rise above it. Final question is Kyle Goon with the Southern California News Group. Hey, Monty, following up on Cam, uh, who's obviously had a really tremendous postseason, what's harder for your guys to do when Cam isn't able to come out in that second half? And, and is it hard not to be frustrated when you get Chris back and, and the timing is such that Cam ha uh, can't finish this game? It, it's one game. You know, we'll, we'll reevaluate. 
how we're going to attack them. We hope Cam can get back on the floor in the next game. Um, like I said earlier, it was hard on Chris because I had to leave him out there for a longer stretch. And uh, during that stretch in the third, they made a run, so I left him out there longer. And that was a tough spot for me to put each one in. So not having Cam to spell Chris uh, put us in a bit of a bind, but you know, hopefully he can come back and play in the next game. All right, Book, we're going to start with Cameron Cox with 12 News. Hey, Book, how much would you think the, the nose affected you tonight? Uh, not at all, honestly. Um, the nose feels fine. So, you know, we just, we lost the game. Next up is Anthony Slater with The Athletic. Yeah, Devin, uh, what has Patrick Beverly done uh, the, the last couple of games defensively um, that, that you feel like has been effective? Uh, he's ultra aggressive. Um, you know, he's denying, you know, limiting touches. Um, so, you know, he, he has one objective out there and, and we understand that. So, you know, I feel like other things should open up and, you know, we have to look at the film and see what's open and see what we can get. Next is Rachel Nichols with ESPN, followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Buck, it's been a while since Greg lost a basketball game. Yeah. What was the conversation in the postgame lunch? Uh, I mean, the spirit's high. You know, we move on to the next one. You know, that's what type of team we are. Um, we've been that way the whole whole season. So, you know, we're going to stick with that. Uh, we'll come in tomorrow, go over film, regroup, and get ready for game four. What were some of the biggest differences for Chris and I before? Um... You know, I think he was getting his wind under him, getting back, you know, coming off of a virus, um, you know, not doing any activity for a few days. But, you know, he, he's ready to go. He's ready to get the practice tomorrow and, you know, ready to get back at it. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, followed by Mark Spears. How much will that conversation that you and Monty have and looking at film will help you going in tomorrow so you can kind of see what you were seeing, but actually see it, you know, and that's it? Yeah, I mean, that's the name of the game. You know, you, you go and, you know, you watch film and see what we could have done better. Um, I mean, we've been doing that since we started playing basketball. So, you know, you, you watch film to improve and, you know, to see what you might have missed in something in a high-tempo game. So, you know, we're, we're going to regroup. How much, how much did you guys miss Cam tonight? How much did what? Did you miss Cam Payne? Oh, a lot. Um, you know, I hope his ankle's doing okay. You know, obviously he's been that spark for us and, you know, he, he's made a lot happen for us while he's been out there. So, you know, I just hope he's in good health. Um, you know, I'll check up on him after we get out of here. This is Mark Spears with ESPN, followed by Kellen Olsen. Look, uh, I'm assuming this is the first time you played with a mask. How did you adjust to it? And also, you talk about talking to Rip, the, um, the advice he gave you. Um, it's fine, honestly. You know, I don't honestly don't really see it or it doesn't affect me. Um, I did talk to Rip about it. You know, I've been preaching for a long time. He's my favorite player of all time. And, you know, I've had short conversations with him in the past. And, you know, I thought this was the perfect time, um, you know, to talk to him some more and, and get some advice. So, you know, he chopped it up with me for a minute, you know, gave me some great feedback, put me in the right mindset to go out there. And, you know, we have to just be better next time. What do you say? Uh, you know, he, he said he stuck with it because, you know, putting on his face, put him in, put him in character. Um, he felt comfortable, you know, getting in the paint, felt he had extra protection. He had an extra layer. Um, he said, just don't worry about it. Don't take it off when you shoot free throws. Um, and just, you know, don't let it be a distraction to you. Next is Kellen Olsen with the Arizona Sports, followed by Dave McMenamin. Hey, Book, in terms of getting to your spots tonight, did you like the quality of shots that you were getting for yourself? Uh, I'd have to rewatch it um, and see. Um, I think so. You know, just just sort of thinking back. You know, I know I missed some that you know I usually make or should make, um, but you know it's part of the game. Next up is Dave McMenamin with ESPN, followed by Tressa Tudrick. Over here, Rachel. You mentioned on the broadcast that the nose was broken in three spots. Yeah. 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 Set. Just walk us through when you found out the severity of the injury. Were you able to like sleep? Sleep in the party you normally would. And what was the getting a set process like? That was probably the worst part. Um, you know, it was a procedure that they usually say they put you under for. Um, but we had a flight out um, a couple hours later, so they just numbed it up. Um, 
all over the place. It felt like like eight eight shots to numb it up, and then they go in there and they put it back. <laughs> they, 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 they break it again. They break it back in play. So, you know, it was my first time experiencing that. But they say Cam Johnson went through it, so I knew I could. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is actually going to be Dan Wojcicki with the LA Times, followed by Gina Mizell. Hey, Devin. Um, after game four of the Lakers series in the first round, you'd had kind of two rough shooting games mm -hmm. like this. And Monty said he told you just go hoop. Um, he also told you go hunt a shot, too, really, really in that next game. Um, how do you process mini slumps like this? Um, are, are you receptive to conversations with other people in it? And, or are you a guy that's just like, leave me alone? I'll, I'll get to this myself. Yeah, I'm a mix of both, I would say. You know, I always hear people out, especially people I respect of, of mine. Um, but, you know, I, I've been playing this game for a long time. You know, I've went through every type of shooting slump that you can think of. Um, and, you know, the best advice that my dad gave me when I moved with them when I was 13 years old is have a short memory in this game. Um, on to the next play, on to the next game, on to the next possession. Um, so the quick you can have a short memory and, just be confident in yourself and the work that you've put in. And, you know, I've pretty much seen every type of situation on the court. So, you know, I, I believe in my work. Um, so next game's going to be better. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com and then Greg Moore. Hey, but, uh, the last time you guys lost a game here, um, it was two days and then went on the streak that you guys were on. Uh, just, is there anything from those two days after game three of the Lakers series as far as how you guys approached I'm kind of bouncing back, that you feel like can help you guys this time around? I mean, we keep our gym the same. You know, that was my first time experiencing that. After we won one versus the Lakers and lost two, you know, we're down 2-1 in L.A. and you come in the gym and it's, it's chill. Everybody's laughing. Everybody's having a good time, but focus at the same time. Just with the, you know, there's understanding around the, around the team on what our next objective is and what we have to do. Um, so it's not really talked about that much you can just feel it in the energy even when you're laughing having a good time out there like everybody's zeroed in and locked in final two questions are going to be greg moore with the arizona republic and brendan clean hey Devin, greg moore arizona republic um <clears throat> you and chris both had bad shooting nights early and we're going to DA early in the first quarter. And I'm wondering what got you guys away from that as the game went on. I'd have to go back, you know, the, the game happened so fast. So, you know, that's what the film is for. Um, yeah, that's that. Final question is going to be Brendan Clean with Locked On Suns. Hey, Book, uh, it seems like late in these games, they seem to have a, a shot to answer a lot of what you guys are doing. How, how do you go about containing them when they go five out like that and they have all those shooters on the floor? Well, I think the biggest thing is just guarding your man, um, just so you're not in rotation. Um, they they play a five out style of basketball when they go with that small ball lineup, and you know I think they're just trying to drive and kick. So just stay in front of your man um, to keep the team out of rotation. All right, Chris. Thanks for joining. We're going to start with Cam Cox with Twelve News. Hey, Chris, first of all, welcome back. Just how would you sum up what happened out there tonight? Uh, they just they outplayed us tonight. You know what I mean? Uh, we didn't make shots. Uh, you could tell they had, you know, a lot more energy. And um, uh, I, I got to be better. I shot terrible. You know what I mean? I got to pick up the pace. We'll be ready game four. Next up is Rachel Nichols with ESPN, followed by Kellen Olson. Hey, Chris. Welcome back. What's up, Rich? Uh, did you get to shoot at all? I know you're not supposed to do any basketball activities while you're out, but did you get to keep up your game at all while you were out? Devin just said he thought you could kind of get your way a few times. Over. Yeah, I messed around a little bit on the court of my house, but other than that, good. I'm just happy to be out here playing. You know what I mean? It's a lot of people, you know, in the world who dealt with this and, you know, don't get the opportunity that I have. So I'm, I'm just grateful to be back out here playing. We haven't heard from you, just the timing of it, obviously so difficult. You can take us through kind of the reaction and then acceptance and then just wait to get back out here. Um, shit happens and it did and I'm here now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm cool, I'm cool. 
Next up is Kellen Olson with the Arizona Sports and then Dan Wojcik. Chris, nice to find the media. And in the third quarter, that's where the Clippers outscored again by 13. What did you see go wrong exactly for you guys there? Um, we was taking the ball out of the net. Man got aggressive. If you watch them all playoffs long, you know, that's when they've been really good at third quarter. You know, so we um, got to see who we can do better. Uh, you know, we missed Cam, you know, Payne. I've been at home watching these last two games and I saw the pace that he was playing with. And, you know, late in the game, we, we started to do a little bit. So uh, we'll, we'll look at the film and try to make sure we're better not only in just the third quarter, but all game long. Next is Dan Wojcik with the LA Times and then Gina Mizell. Hey, Chris. Yep. Good to see you. Happy, happy feeling well. Appreciate um, it. It's been a few years since you played a playoff game here in Los Angeles. Um, I played a couple here a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long year, Chris. Um, <laughs> did, I'm, I'm curious, though, you, you've experienced a ton when it comes to, to weird stuff that's happened to you in the playoffs. What have you taken from those experiences? Do you feel more equipped to handle a curveball, kind of like the one you got thrown? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, things could be a lot worse. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm here now. Um, got an unbelievable team. It's named Phoenix, and I got the best support system you could absolutely have. So ain't nobody over here feeling sorry. <laughs> Whatever that's in the past, you move on. Next up is Gina Mizell with Suns.com and then Dwayne Rankin. Chris, good to see you. You too. Yeah, you too. Um, just, I know playing so many games in your life, you, I imagine a lot of it, it's like riding a bike, but when you are out for 10 days, and what is the most, the, hard, the toughest thing to get back as far as just kind of nuances of the game tonight? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I just, I can't wait to get home and watch the film from the game. You know, uh, it's a lot easier playing than it is watching at home. I'll tell you that much. My nerves was terrible these past two games watching at home. But, um, you know, it felt good to get back out there and play. And and now, you know, we got some unfinished business. Next is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic and then Dave McMenamin. Over Chris. Yep. Nice to finally meet you. You too, man. <laughs> wanted to ask just how was your body feeling? Tonight, because Bonnie was saying that condition, if you thought you would turn out to get your when you play a little longer than you normally would have, if Cameron was there, so how was your, how was the body? Feeling? I was cool. I was good. Um, yeah, I was good. I was good. I feel like I feel even better next game. But uh, yeah, I was, I was cool. I was prepared, you know, so. Next is Dave McMiniman with ESPN and then Tressa Tedrick. Um, yep. I think Chris Haynes reported that you were out in LA to, to a surprise thing with your family uh, and then you backed out um, about the health and safety protocols needed in the absence. Just getting back to that moment, like, how did you find out? Do you, have you been racking your brain wondering how it could have happened? Um, they reported that you were vaccinated, so obviously it's uh, I was laying in bed with my kids and got a text from Brady. You know what I mean? And so then you go into, um, you know, it is what it is, you know, dealt with it. Uh, anybody with kids, anytime you're going through something, the hardest part is being away from your kids and your family, you know? So uh, once you get over the shock of what's happening, to hell with how and why, you know, you just start, you know, figuring out how you can how you can get better. Like I said, I got the best team in the world you could possibly have, and I'm here. I'm great, appreciate it. Next is Tressa Tedrick with Channel Three, Channel Five, and then Mark Spears. Hey, Chris. Uh, welcome back. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about. Um, there's been a minute since your team has lost. You've kind of been in this position before. What do you say to a team to kind of reset for the next game? Uh, get your rest, get some water, hydrate, get ready for game four. Uh, that's about it. That's what we said. We'll come in tomorrow, look at it, see what we did well, see what we didn't do well, and, and get ready for uh, uh, the game on what, Saturday? Yep. Next is Mark Spears with ESPN and then Anthony Slater. Chris, uh, welcome back. Pleasure. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, talk about book. Uh, how do you do? You think the mask affected him at all? And, and did you guys 
talk much about it. And what what did you think about his in, his injury? Uh, they happened. Um, I told him game two as soon as it happened. First thing popped in my mind was Steve Nash. You know what I mean? But I mean, he got the mask. He he fine. You know what I mean? Like we're not one of those teams. We looking for excuses and all that stuff. You know we. Uh, get them that credit. They they play really well tonight. We'll we'll get ready for game four. Got time for three more. Next is going to be Anthony Slater with the Athletic, and then Sam Amick. Chris, along those lines, you actually broke your nose uh, back early in your uh, Clippers tenure and and had to wear a mask for a few games. Do you remember that at all? Did it affect you? Um, it affect your play at all? Uh, I remember. I did have to wear a mask for a few games. I don't remember if I broke my nose. I don't know what it was. Yeah, no, I was cool. Did it for a few games and then I was all right. Final two questions are Sam Amick with The Athletic and Dwayne Rankin. CP, good seeing you. What up, Sam? Glad you're helping, man. Appreciate it. I wonder, you spent these last two years playing damn near every game and then you got a game with these stakes that you're having to watch remotely, but with what this crew did, I mean, what did you see? What was it like for you to be FaceTiming with them afterwards? Um, it's kind of a blur now. I feel like that was like three weeks ago. Right. But uh, it's it's great, man. You know, I didn't talk to a few guys around the league who, who called, checked on me or whatnot. But I think the biggest thing, um, they called and said they just love the way our team is, you know. A few guys, like stars in our league who called and was like, man, just to see the way that you guys really play together, play for each other, you know, that's real, you know, our, our relationships and stuff. So um, it's genuine, it's a fun group to be around. And when you're around a group like that, you uh, you want to win. You don't ever want the season to end because you actually like being around each other. So. On a question, it's Dwayne Rankin. Hey Chris, obviously I saw you with Javon before the game, it looked like you were taking it all in, being back on the floor. And now that this game is over, how much is it now? Hey, look, let's get to back to what we need to do. Just so you know, Dwayne, we do that before every game. I, I didn't know that. I know. I'm just telling okay. you. We do that before every game, okay. right before the national anthem. Okay. That's part of our pre-game pre -game routine. Okay. That's what me and JC do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. None more, none less. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all good. But I'm just telling you. You're going to see it again Saturday. Okay. Yeah. Could we send that no, please? Oh, man. Hey, talk to the right people. <laughs> uh, many guys on this team, you know, have talked about poise throughout this postseason. Um, just in a packed house like this one was tonight, in a game of this magnitude, just how tough can it sometimes be to, you know, keep that poise and how important will that be going forward? Uh, so if tough, is, tough is the right word. Um, it's just something that you have to do. But um, it, it, You're right, it's a packed house. Um, they just kind of outplayed us tonight. So I can uh, bring it tomorrow and, and getting ready for the next one. Next up is going to be Nicole Jarena from Puerto Rico. Hi, Cam. How much important is for you and the team have veterans like Jay and Chris in this moment when the team need, don't lose the focus of the war? in the beginning can you can you repeat the question please uh, of course how much important is for you and the team have veterans like jay and chris in this moment when the team need don't lose the focus of the gore you can it's kind of good is is chris and jay situations yes but like veterans in the team. Yeah, um, very important. Um, obviously, they've been here. Chris has been here a lot. Maria, um, Jay, Jay's been here. Um, so that that veterans um, headiness and poise is is really um, and and their guys would definitely rely on for that. Thank you. Next up is Christos Saltos from Greece. Hello, Cam. Hope you're doing well. What did you learn from tonight's game for you as a team? And what would you like to improve with Chris Paul on the floor in game four? Easy. And it's not that we didn't know that, but uh, they definitely came out and gave us a good shot today. And they played better than us. They played harder than us. Um, the big thing is we just, we just got to keep our heads, weather the storms, um, 
and listen for the next one.